It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Welcome to Sports Betting Weekly. I am second half Chaz. It is nice to be here on this Thursday with only three more shows where we're going to talk about American football. We may talk some football. We may talk some Canadian football. But we've got the division round, the conference championships, and our canceled Betaway Weekend to Vegas. First time in eight years it's been canceled, but they're canceling a lot of other stuff that's a little more important than my trip to Vegas, so I'm going to let them go. And then, of course, we got a week off. Not sure what we're going to do that week. We are going to start talking to some other guys besides handicappers because there's a lot of tools out there that uh, the three of us on tonight's show use, and there's some, some people that may not know those tools are out there, and really, uh, any handyman's only as good as his tools. That's what I tell people all the time. My easy sports data program is not necessarily anything, just a tool and a toolkit. It's not the only thing I use. It just makes it letters, colors, and numbers, stuff you learned in preschool. So it's one of the reasons I do do good. I don't win every bet, but you know what? I do good, and that's all that matters. So I don't do as good probably as the next two guys, but a lot of times when I'm winning, I'm betting their place anyway. So I, I guess I'm winning no matter which way you look at it. So uh, we're going we're gonna to reach out now. We're going to talk to Ja from GMF Sports Consult. We're going to get uh, Blackhawk West involved here. But we're going to make sure that they understand we're going to have a specific goal to this first segment, and that's looking at the big board. We're going to recap. We're going to recap. We two winners not to recap. You know what? When you're wrong, people let you know. When you're right, you got to let them know. And then we're going to talk about our live action. So my goal for this show is – to give you a reason to watch, well, if you could cash a ticket or, or know it's going to cash or be way, way on the way to catching before the show's over, well, I don't think there's any other shows doing that. So that's going to be our plan. Now, will it work out? Well, I'm pretty sure it will. I've got uh, some ideas. So, John, here, here's what I want to tell you. I'm thinking we all do one best bet, live action, from the minute we got on the show. Now, you could look ahead of time. I did not. Wes and I, Wes, you know, you and I, we, we talk live action all the time, you know. But last night, I mentioned to Wes, I guess hockey's just opening up. Uh, you know, when, until Wes tells me it's time to bet hockey, I don't bet hockey. His name is Blackhawk Wes. Duh. Do the math. But here's what I'm looking at. I got other guys that give me a place. So this guy gives me an over. It's over six. And I bet it for the first period. I bet it for the game. And they score one. So and he he already wrote it on his on his board. He put it as a loser, but I didn't realize he was going to update it as the night went on, because I loaded up on it at the end of the first, and then they scored one each in the second. So now it's two to one. So not only did I take five and a half, I took six and a half. So now I have five and a half twice, six and a half, and six the original six, and it was the Oilers game, and they uh they scored they went I think they scored what six goals less in the third. Did I mute you? Oh, I got to mute you. Yeah, yeah, they did. I mean, yeah, yesterday was just pretty incredible, the way that goals were getting scored left and right. I, and NHL's hard after, after one night. But, yeah, they, they lit that lamp in the third period. So I'm going to ask you now, because I know that you like hockey. You, you bet, you're you a lot of good things, but you like hockey. So, yeah, I would say, yes, it is. It's hard in the beginning. Any sport is. We talk about that all the time. But – with live action early in the season, how much do you do? Early in the season, I look for the gap. And I, I, to me, that's a common sense play. I look for the gap in the dog. So a team up 3 nothing in the first period, and that doesn't happen often. I mean, it did to my Blackhawks yesterday. But time out, time out. What two terms did you use? The gap. Between the score and the game and the line? Uh, the the gap the between the – the between, goals each team? Between, the, between the winner and the loser. Okay. Like right now, the Islanders and Rangers, at the end of, of one, yeah. it's three nothing, but it was pretty much a toss up, right? Yeah. So the smart play there is Rangers, and you're probably going to get four or four and a half. Um, the, the pregame, uh, the Rangers were actually the favorite. So the the smart move there is to just take the Rangers and the points. You don't so, see a lot of minus 10 in, on hockey, though. That's a coin flip, right? Uh, what's it, it, minus one ten was a six over under, right? Right. So, so that's for the Rangers. What were the Islanders? 
Um, I, I'm not, I have to, I'd have to look it up. I wasn't paying much attention to the game, but um, you know, when you're you're talking about what to look for in some of those games, you look for a team go up big, and then you look at the other guy, three to nothing. That that could happen in hockey, but uh, one would think one team's gonna pump the brakes. Well, I'm, like I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm seeing three to nothing. Though the dog is winning at at the Rangers Arena. Yep. So so right now you can catch plus three at a minus 110 payoff with the Rangers, which that's probably the smart play. Uh, If you are a firm believer in the Rangers and the money line, if they were a favorite ahead of the time, I mean, plus 750, that's a lot of value there. The smart move is you take points there. And that's, that's what I'll look for if I'm actually going to watch these games, because it's, it's important with hockey to watch the games because they're, they, most of the teams have a two goalie rotation. So you got to know two goalies. Uh, the travel does matter, the consecutive days of travel. And these are all new divisions right now, too. They've shuffled the deck and put them into completely different divisions. So some of the familiarities aren't there anymore. Um, and old rivalries. Old rivalries have come back in, in some divisions. So NHL, on a normal season, on a non-COVID season, I would probably give it about two or three weeks just to see how things are going to unfold. And this is an odd one, too, because we just crowned a champion at the beginning of September. And here we are in, in another season. Well, the NBA is like that. So let's talk to John from GMF Sports Consult. You know, one of the things, John, by the way, this has nothing to do with anything, but uh, I made I made a note that we have to put together a package uh, for after the Super Bowl for, okay. your, uh, for, your, uh, for your plays and stuff because we did a deal. But uh, with football ending, I know for a fact – that in the old days, when it wasn't legal everywhere, when football ended, the, the betting handle went down a little. But I'm telling you right now, these guys that are basketball fans, that are college basketball fans, that are hockey fans, <laughs> they can bet in their bathroom. So, and it's legal. You know, we can always bet our bathroom, but it wasn't always legal. So, so right now, what are you doing? Um, what are you looking at? I mean, today, like today, did you handicap and what did you handicap? Uh, yeah. So today we're the main focus is, is going to be college basketball for me. And NBA is 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 really, really, really tough, um, especially, obviously, I mean, all sports ex- experience it with the COVID situation. Um, but yeah, NBA for, for you guys who are betting NBA, it's tough because you can't really put your bets in ahead of time. The between players sitting last minute scratches, these so-called rest days. I mean, look at, and I don't want to make another example out of him because I'm sure if you follow NBA, you know about Kyrie Irving with the Nets, with the situation that he's sitting out. Now, you know, whatever his personal situation is, I'm not aware of, but, you know, we're barely, what, 10, 12 games into the season. He's already missed a handful of games. So, you know, you have to pay a constant attention to these lineups at NBA. And so getting your bet in in the morning, you know, night before, I, I don't do that. I, I really won't start really seriously betting NBA until probably about another month or two until you start seeing that little separation and you can kind of tell which teams are more geared, you, you know, to kind of play in the playoffs and stuff like that. Um, college basketball, that's probably my second favorite sport, my second best sport to, to bet besides, you know, baseball and, and, uh, and NFL will probably be a 50-50 split. And then I'm also watching NHL. I'm not a big NHL better, but with the uh, Vegas Knights here in Las Vegas, you know, we got oh, hockey. We got I'm hockey fever enough. in the desert. You know? when, the Kings, <laughs> when the Kings were good back in the day, and I was living up in Orange County, it, it changes your world when your team is good. Now, look at the summer we had. We had the worst summer in history. I couldn't go to the San Diego Zoo, for heaven's sakes. The friendliest place on earth said, don't come to here. So, so. That pandemic really messes up, but because the Padres were good, it made it gave you something to look forward to at the end of the day, and they were hitting grand slams every day for a week or so. So oh, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right. The, the Vegas Knights and their success really it, it makes you appreciate hockey. Now we we know hockey is a great sport. If you're a hockey guy, you know you think it's the best sport, and it really is. And live, there's nothing like the live hockey game. It really is because the camera follows you know the bump the puck. And almost all the activity has nothing to do with the puck. And that's the beauty of it. But, um, all right, so we got a guy. We got one guy that will we'll look at college basketball. One guy to look at hockey, a little hockey. So we got to come up with three plays. If We got to come up with three plays in the first 20 minutes of the show every week. We each go with our best bet. And it's a live action play. Now, 
It may not cash by the time. However, it could, as you know, uh, Wes, right? With with uh, overs in, in hockey, we've had times. How many times have you and I talked in the last couple of years? And bang, bang, we got back-to-back goals. Yeah, well, first period. Or yeah, you we can... had one and a half for the period, and we got two goals in six minutes. So, But yeah. basketball, probably not. But you know what? Say you, you – we're looking at basketball lines, and I'll use college basketball. So I'm going to go here, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to bounce at a few scores and see what's going on. But what I look for is I, – I didn't know what you meant by gap, but, yeah, I look for – the first thing I look for is a dog that's winning the game early because most games ain't a sprint. They're a marathon, and especially basketball where the last two minutes can last an hour and a half. I mean, you know, we've been at, we've been at – NCAA games. We went to the tournament many, many years in a row. Not the Final Four, but everything up to the Final Four uh, on the West Coast, of course. And so we'd end up in, in San Jose or we end up in Anaheim or L.A. Oh, my God, when you're there, you don't realize how much you're just standing around waiting for the guys to play basketball again at the end because they put in commercial after commercial after commercial. It's brutal. Uh, so that's what I'm thinking. And, and, and then in hockey, we'll, we'll do the same thing. It, it really doesn't matter the sport, but really – we're limited right now, I think, on a Thursday night because I never, you know me, uh, Wes, longer than John. I'm a, I'm a weekend guy. Uh, Thursday, I'm looking at Saturday. My son called me. I remember the Brazil story, so I'm still being his bookie, and and he called me and I said, No, I'm not been the Lakers. They won. I'm not been the Lakers. I got, to, I got, I got to work. I have a job, you know. And so, uh, but that's that's going to be my plan because I really believe that you know you can't parlay him. But if we could go two out of three, then you're going to come out right with the head units. It might all be three quarters of a unit. You know, you never know what those second half lines. They'll get them up sometimes to 140, 150. But if we think it's an easy winner, you know what? I, you know, I talked to my wife about, and we're going to cover, so we're going to cover Saturday in segment two. And in the se- uh, third segment, we're going to ca- uh, cover Sunday. But I talked to her about the Kansas City game. And I've got some notes that I made to talk uh, to her about uh, a gambling strategy when the points are that big, because the only way, as you both know, to get the points down is you got to give them your money. You give them money, their money, it'll give you the points down. And in the Kansas City game, you give them a lot of money, and you get zero points, you know? Uh, so, so John, t- so tonight, do you have the ability to, to look at some college basketball scores while we're on the air? Um, I Not while we're on the air, um, right, but, so, I, but so, I will, but I will, because... Uh, w- I will give you one right now because I actually have I actually have action on this game as we speak and it and it just went into halftime. So I was looking at I was looking at the Indiana. So Indiana is playing Purdue. Indiana's at home. Uh, Indiana was a four point favorite, three and a half point favorite, and what they're an t- that's an excellent excellent one. Yeah, and and they're down right now. It just we just went into halftime and they're down. I believe it was forty to thirty six. Of I'm watching the game, so I'm kind of keeping it out the corner of my eye. So that's what I see. I'm actually on Indiana tonight. So this oh, is that, this, that, yeah. that that works for that works for your play for sure. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yep. So so and that's a good one. So we're gonna hop on that right now. Mm-hmm. We're gonna hop on that before we go any better. Now the beauty of it, that's technically a live action play, but it isn't because we can parlay that as Correct. well. Correct. We can do some second Probably. half plays with that as well. Yep. So, if, you know, if you met if you manage to have another four o'clock game going on and, and there's some advantage, so, you know. No, so it's minus to- three. A, a, a traditional minus one ten. Okay. We had a, actually a conversation Saturday night about betting games that are minus three, but that, that was yeah. A, <laughs> yeah. And so here's what I'm doing. I'm going to do seven. Uh, I'm going to do a half a unit. I'm going to do a half a unit to win on the straight bet. Okay. And then I'm going to take that same a half a unit, and I'm going to put an open parlay in because I, you know, you guys know, but people said. Oh, something about porn. I said, listen, I do open parlays. It's better than porn any day of the week. Yep. I'm going to go and I'm going to go live open parlay with them for 752. So that'll give me a unit on the game. But if God forbid, you know, you're right and your handicapping was right from the beginning, uh, then um, I'll be live and I could use that to fill that in later this weekend. Exactly. Yep. So, Wes, if I if I talk to you tonight and I said, okay, you know, and remember, Wes, we walk into the Westgate and there's that big board, you know, with all the numbers on it. Uh, what uh, What's the first thing you think your eye would go to tonight? Well, if we're walking into Westgate, the first thing I'm going for is a racing form. All where, right. I like that answer. Where, where, where are the buggies running? Where, where's the first place I can put money on a trotter? Yep. <laughs> 
But well, it, it really is. Um, I, I grew up back in the day, and, I, and a Squeak occasionally checks us out. We probably have going to have Squeak on here when we do some horse racing. He's got a horse racing fantasy thing though, that I think that we'd all like. But what I'm looking at is uh, the Trotters came on after wrestling. Awesome. So got, I think we got 30 minutes of wrestling in the 30 at 11 o'clock, like on a Saturday night. You know, we were teenage guys, so you know, most of us, you know, we got in trouble. We got caught out after 11. You know, so yeah. But well, it, uh, the Trotters have always been. I love the Trotters, and they're really. Besides the fact that it's fixed, it really is a, a little easier than thoroughbreds. I think the program's a lot easier to read. Most of the races are, are, you know, they're all in a mile. I mean, that's really all you're looking at. And, you know, you got the class to take into consideration. And when they start moving around from track to track, you know, different tracks are faster. You got the mile track, the, the half mile track, but uh, none of the furlong business with the flats. You know, it's a little bit easier. But uh, oh, it, that's not going to help us. So say, no. say they have no more, fur, they have no more. Well, well, let me ask you a question. That's a great question, actually, because Tommy, wouldn't, it wouldn't stop Tommy in a second from Ben. If there's no more forms left, I'm not betting. How about no. you? I need the form. I, 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 I need the form. I could be dead wrong 10 races in a row, but I break down the stats and the book the way that I break it down. And by the time I go to place my bet, I feel like I had a cup of coffee with the job. Yeah. Okay. So that doesn't help us at all tonight because we're not, we got, we got, uh, we got NFL, NCAA football, NCAA, that ain't going to help us either. NCAA basketball, NBA, NHL. Well, I'm, I'm staying with that New York, New York. Team. I mean, I think we just called it out. We got a, we got a two teams that are pretty equally matched. The edge in, in coaching, I think, goes to the Rangers. And, and they're down by three. So, and at this point, it's shifted to plus, uh, plus 110 on the payoff. Uh, we're just asking them to lose by two, make a game of it. So, right. What are we going to for our second live play tonight? New York Rangers plus three. New York Rangers point spread puck line. I got him at two and a half right now. I don't like that as much as I like three. So there might be a, there's probably a power play or something. That, that could be, but it's normally they shut it down for that, don't they? Uh, they just shift. Sometimes on my page, it it starts blinking and flashing, and um, you know, normally that's a. And so, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave the window open, right? And, and see what happens. We're, we're trying to get that Rangers to plus three. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Uh, you know what? While we're here, what if the Rangers score? They're not going to – they're not going to – we're never going to get that, right? They score, it's probably going to two. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for the Rangers to win the game outright. So, so I'm and, just going to throw this out. We're not going to count that as we're not going to count that as one of our plays. But I'm thinking to myself, I will kick myself if I don't put a couple ducats on that. That's so, the way, you know. So, Chaz, I'll throw this at you because if you're liking the Rangers to win outright, and I, I I can see John's eyes lighting up, um, the over is six and a half. So the Rangers winning outright means you got to cover six and a half to do it. You got to get to seven. So, just I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, the original yeah, that's, under that's, that's, that's minus one twenty nine. That's minus 129. Yeah. I, so let me ask you this, and I, I like that. So we're, we're going to put that in, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to count that as, as as mine. So we're still waiting for yours. But the only way we're going to get yours, here's the thing. The only way we're going to get that three is they're going to have to go without score for a while. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so rather than go with the over, I'm going to hop on the two and a half. And the reason, the logic is this. I only need one goal. They, they go the whole period and they do nothing for two periods and they get one goal at the end, then I'm good. Now, so I'm going to ask you some hockey stuff that I don't know. Now, you know Joe from Connecticut. He's a great hockey guy. We've got a couple of hockey guys we've talked to. So the question I'm, I'm asking for you is when do you have too many goals? To, when are you down too many goals that you don't pull the net anymore? You pull the goalie. Uh, it, it really depends on coaching and it depends on the players. And it also depends on the importance of the game. First game of the season, team down four to four to nothing, four to one. The, I would think they're not pulling the goalie. But, you know, some coaches, they, they want a hard effort every single time and and, and they're going to push and they're going to they, that's just what they want to do. But uh, three to one, I think you're still pulling the goalie. What will change, though, is how early you pull the goalie and the momentum of the game. But uh, at some point, 
they they probably just don't care too much about it because again with hockey it's not like college football where you gotta win and look good doing it a win is worth two points in the standings so you could win eight to nothing you could win two to one it it all did the same thing for you and the name of the game is to get out without getting anybody injured so if you're down seven to one five to one in a hockey game when you're the coach oh yeah that's where they'll switch goalies and stuff yeah i've seen that get your guys out of there don't get your captain hurt don't get your top line deep defenseman hurt okay so here's where we're at we're gonna count and this is one of the sports betting lessons tips you gotta have multiple books because if i'm not live on a show i'm looking at both books but i only have money in one book I got my kids' money in the other books. So we're trying to keep it separate. It wasn't that important. But I'm going to count your three. We're going to count your three as a play because I would have made that. So what was it when you saw it? It was minus 110. All right. So then um, we got uh, Indiana minus three for the second half, right? Mm-hmm. And that's because that was just timing. That was great timing on your, on your call. Uh, yeah, that worked out good. <laughs> and we got one more we put in. What was it? I think Wes was saying about the over too. If if you were if you were leaning no, towards the Rangers so. right now, yeah. what, did I, what did we end up going to the third play? I'll just have to, you know what? Let me just refresh my screen here, and I'll see what we have. I thought there was. I one. think I think you also said you had the Rangers money line too. I think you said you were going to. Yeah, I'm not counting that. So uh, can I count that? I got you. Oh, oh, let's see. Was it? Uh... Oh no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, that game hasn't started. I would use my buddy's play there, but okay. So no. Yeah, I we uh we have yours, we have his. So I didn't have one yet. Mm. So I have one. All right. So and then, and, and, and I'll tell you what, that'll be great. When we come back from break, I'm gonna kind of show you how. If my wife says, "Honey, do you mind if I go out with my friends?" and I have no plans <laughs> on betting, what I do when we come back, you're listening to Sports Betting Weekly. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Welcome back to Sports Betting Weekly. So we're doing this. What we're doing, here's their plan. There's a lot of guys, right? Would you both agree there's a lot of guys? I'm going to talk to you John, there's a lot of guys out there doing shows like ours, right? Oh, yeah. Especially especially right now. I mean, with the pandemic, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys getting into podcasts and, and just in general. And there's a lot of people betting. And obviously with the, uh, you know, betting being legal and all these states adopting the sports book and allowing – you know, gambling, there's more and more people giving more and more opinions and, you know, social media is a great way to do it, you know? Okay. So, so, so Wes, um, yes, sir. Do you, do you, do you, do you watch any of these kind of shows on sports center or any shows that are betting shows? Yes. And no, I, I mean, I pay, I like, I watch a lot of sports. I like to listen to a lot of talk radio and I like, I like the opinions. Um, but what I find the, Stuff that's interesting to me in watching the sports is when they talk to the different players. And I like the opinions that are out there, but quite frankly, they're not their opinions are geared around the game and not necessarily who's gonna cover and who's not. I mean, there's there's the big picks panel where everybody makes a pick towards the end of the game. And some of the networks they've even gone to picking against the spread. But I don't know that they're breaking down games and looking at it through the same lens as jabronis like us. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate the, the compliment. But anyway, so, so. <laughs> yeah, I almost like any of those shows on like ESPN. Like if when these guys are giving betting advice, like I don't even listen, listen to that. I, these And no knock on any of the guys on ESPN or Fox Sports, you know, they're great radio personalities. But for the most part, I wouldn't take any betting advice from them. They're not really doing, you know, 99 percent of the research that we're doing or anything like that. So, you know, as far as watching it, like I like Barstool Sports, obviously, you know, they've had a great, great run. You, you know, but they're more creative content, I think, than probably a gaming, you know. And then probably if you're going to watch a little bit of, like, funny segment, uh, Scott Van Pelt does a Bad Beats okay. segment. Love it. So, yeah, so, I, I mean, like, that is, like, I, I just love watching that. And, and man, it, it's it's great well, just because you put yourself in those shoes. Even though you didn't have that ticket, I, I mean, we've all been there. So, you oh, put yourself in those shoes. And, no, not about yeah. It. yeah. But I think we both, I think all three of us have been on both the good and the bad side. And and some of the, when I'm on the good side, I'm cheering. I, I hope that makes Van Pelt. I hope that makes Van Pelt because I wasn't on the bad beat side of that. How about Buffalo in the first half, right? There's yeah. no way I win that first half. Mm-hmm. It was my big bet of the day. It was the first bet of the day. I tell my wife, 
first bet of the day, last bet of the day. That's what I, if I can hit just those two, I'm a happy man because I'm playing with house money for a while. And at least I got something to buy my date dinner with. So my, my wife really likes football. She's a big football fan. Doesn't watch the show, but she's a big football fan. So she likes the HBO Showtime, the Showtime, you know, channel. And they do the picks. And I saw it. I don't really watch it. Uh, Sweetie Pie, I love you, but I just watched all the games, every single play of the games. I don't need to see it again, you know. But um, I do watch a little at the end when they talk about next week. But the record, the, the number one guy is, I think is 500. He's a coin flip, the best. And when we when we did our CBS, we did our CBS contest, Wes, our guys were much higher than 50%. Oh, for sure. And I, I, if we're if we're fifty percent in what we're doing, we're paying juice most of the time. Unless you're picking outright money line winners. In every or, single game. Yeah. So, you're never going to do that. But even in our CBS contest, yeah. you had to pick every single game, and our guys were fifty-five, sixty percent. Yes. To win, you need to be above sixty percent to win. So the I, here's what I did. I went down and I looked and I saw I got I had San Houston at San Antonio. So I, I just did a quick look at their past 10 games. That's what I look at when uh, I – if my wife leaves and she says, honey, do you mind at the last minute Julie's picking me up, we're going to go hiking. <laughs> oh, go, baby. And then I get out the, the – the, open the computer, look at the book. I, so I get a matchup, and I'll usually have it on each screen. So i got two screens. Uh, team, the, the home team is on the right. Of course, the bidders are on my left. And I just look at their last 10, and I see if anything jumps out of me, and I move on. So I got – San Antonio was losing by nine. They're given seven and a half. And I looked, and Houston has lost, like, most of their games on the court. And San Antonio hasn't. And I said, you know what, that's what I'm going with. So my – the third play today is San Antonio for the game minus one and a half. So they opened it minus seven and a half. We got it minus one and a half. We now have three live plays we're talking about as the show goes on and right before we leave. And when we win, we could do the math on social media, and people will come and listen, and then they will win, and then we'll, we will actually be. You know what our name will become? The line changers, the line movers. It won't be sports betting weekly anymore. We'll be the line movers. So let's talk Saturday. Saturday, I'm going to start the, with. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, each the floor. I want uh, John on the first game. John first, then West. Then I'll give my opinions afterwards. So, John, the first game Saturday. Saturday. Well, Saturday is my personal favorite slate out of out of the two days. Both those games, I'm personally probably going to be betting on. Uh, like I said last week, you know, NFL playoffs. You know, don't go crazy, guys. You, you know, these are very very competitive teams. Um, but I'm going to go stick with the Buffalo Bills. No one circles the wagon. Um, they're at six and a half. I'll probably look to buy that down to six. Um, and then once again, you know, wait, wait for that in play. Uh, as we mentioned last week, uh, we had some Buffalo in play action because Indy, Indy got up first. So there was an opportunity that we can jump in. And then uh, I've been riding Green Bay for a long, 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 long time. Uh, and so I'm just going to kind of continue with them on, on that trend too. Uh, Sunday, I, I, I like no, no, to see. No, 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 no. 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 Oh. Look, I apologize. You're going to talk about the first game. Then Wes is going to talk about the first game, and then I'm going to comment. Then okay. in the half of the segment, you're going to talk about the second game. Then Wes, this is just Saturday's segment. So that, give gotcha, a gotcha. more about that, that Rams at Green Bay game. All right. No, no. I want to hear more from John. He just mentioned he likes Green Bay. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I just like Green Bay. I, I, obviously, I'd have to give their offense a, a huge advantage. Uh, the Rams, their defense is, is pretty good. You obviously see what they did against Seattle, which was – Kind of the most surprising because I actually had Seattle winning that game, not by much, but I had Seattle winning that game last week. So uh, the, just the quarterback issues kind of worry me on the L.A. Rams side. But this week, I, I just have to go with Green Bay uh, at home with, with Rodgers. I, I have to go with them. I, I have to take them. And what do you got? What are they giving? Touchdown? I believe, yeah, yeah, I believe it's six, six and a half. Yeah. No. Same game, Wes. So I- – I'm also on the Green Bay side of the game. A um, little bit different reasoning. Everything John said, I, I agree with. But what I started to look at, uh, Green Bay only has two wins this season by five or less. They, they've won 13 games this season. And in every one of those games, for the most part, they're over that seven-point spread or six-point spread. So, And then I, I just look at kind of the offense, offensive turmoil that the Rams are going to be in this week. They, 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 
didn't really show much quarterback identity last week. And and I don't think it's going to get any better with a team like Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers coming off a bye. And that coach-quarterback combination, I know that there was a lot of talk about it. And you'll hear uh, play-by-play guys talk about how that's a good relationship. But I think it really is. And now coming off a bye, those guys are having fun with one another. And I think that they're going to be able to jump on on the Rams. And the Rams won't be able to come back. And I think that that's going to force the Rams – offense into mistakes and the defense will become one dimensional. I, I think that Green Bay is going to win this game pretty big. I don't look for any competition on the Rams side, e- even with the, that amazing defense that they have. So here's what I'm doing. I'm betting the Rams in the first half. I'm betting for the game. I'm betting the over by itself. I'm betting in a parlay. I will have the team total over for Green Bay for both the first half. And the game. And then at the second half, my plan is to bet Green Bay and the team total over. So I like Green Bay. All right. So that's Saturday at 1.30. Now, uh, let's see. We're in good shape. We're going to go to Saturday at 5 o'clock. We're going to talk about Baltimore at Buffalo. Now, we know you love Buffalo. Now, last week, oh, my God, if you only bet Buffalo for the game, then you know what? I have no sympathy because we've been here for eight years now teaching you that if you like them, it's like Chicago. Vote often, vote early. If you like it. Why wouldn't you have them in the first quarter? I always do a little bitty, a little bit first quarter because, first of all, it's the first ticket that's going to cash. I'm not betting any kind of props like first team, first uh, touchdown until the, the AFC, NFC games. But if, if it wins, and you, you say a third of a unit, well, guess what? That's a third of a unit. That'll cover some of the big later on if you got a game where you want to, you know, buy a, like, you buy a couple points. And, and you go from 110 to, to 150 or something. Um, and then um, and, and so with the, uh, with the second game, we got Baltimore at Buffalo. Buffalo is minus two and a half, I think, right? We got a ticker. We got a yeah, t- I, think, I think it was it was at three, but I think it, I think it dropped to two and a half today. Um, there's also oh, some... So you're coming back on a team that, that, that lost against the spread last week. Yeah, they, yeah, they lost. They lost against the spread last week. There was some in-game opportunities uh, with them before, but yeah, I'm, you, you know, Buffalo probably at that two and a half. I'm, I'm going to see what what the money line situation is compared to you know the overall juice on 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 the spread line. So I'll take a look at that, and then also you have to take a look at the weather because from what I'm hearing, there could be some snow situation uh, in Buffalo. I I kind of seen that run across and heard it somewhere. I haven't really looked uh, too far ahead in the weather schedule, but you know that's something. You got to take in mind. I mean, over, it's Buffalo. You, you know, they, they could get a lot of snow and that could change the game. You know, and I, I mean, Lamar Jackson looked fantastic running the ball. I, I, I mean, after they got down, like he pretty much took that game on, on his shoulders and, and, you know, got Baltimore all the way back. So it's going to be tough for Buffalo to control um, Baltimore, but maybe they get some snow. Maybe that helps them well, a little I'm going to ask you a question, John. Before yeah. go, I'm going to say, hey, there was a game, it was a bowl game, I think, where it might have been a playoff game. It might have been week 16 or 17. You guys, if you saw the game, remind me, where you couldn't tell the way the camera angles, you couldn't tell where they were on the field. There were, And they finally digitally put in, oh, it was Chris Collinsworth, whatever game he does. Sunday night. I, I remember that game. I just don't remember the team, but I know it was yeah, bad. It, it was it, really, it, really it, bad. They put in the number. So mm-hmm. I'm talking about – you know that field. You see that field in your brain, right? That field right there. If that field shows up on Saturday night, does that make him less dangerous or more dangerous? Uh, that That's a good question. I, I would almost say more because you would kind of almost expect them to run a little bit more. But, you know, is the Buffalo defense going to, you know, focus in on that? Uh, it, it's tough with the snow. I think Lamar – didn't Lamar Jackson have some cleats issues too? I, I, I remember him changing cleats and maybe like the middle of the season. Like he looked – he was slipping all around and then he had to change some cleats around. I think I kind of remember – I'm not sure if that was him or not. But I, I would say – I would probably say more dangerous. I, the, Lamar Jackson, if you watched that game last week, you seen how fast he was compared to everybody else, which is crazy, which is – I, I mean, if this guy gets just a little bit – of open room, like he's going to blow right past you. And I think that's going to be the issue with Buffalo here. If they can get, obviously that's almost with any team, but if you can control Lamar yeah. Jackson, because he's going to run a hundred yards. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember. And just so you know, those, a uh, little plug for our sponsor, championshipfootballs.com. We're working right now at a reissue. We don't reissue many. We have people that call. We put them on a waiting list. We, when we get enough, we're going to reissue the Louisville Sugar Bowl, uh, Sugar Bowl. Football. They won the Sugar Bowl, I think it was. 
I think it was the Sugar Bowl. But they won the big bowl game when he was there. Uh, and then, you know, they haven't won since. So we're going to do that. So let's ask Wes. Wes, that same field, it was so bad that they had it digitally imposed numbers, the 30-yard line. Does that make him less dangerous or more dangerous than Lamar Jackson on Saturday? I think no matter what field you put him on, he's going to win this game. I, I have Baltimore in the game. I had Baltimore last week. Um, and for similar reasons, I didn't expect Baltimore's defense to do what they did against Tennessee and hold them to 13 points and, and just pretty much silence one of the toughest beasts of a running back in, in football. But I think that the way that they're able to control the clock, uh, Buffalo just let Indy own the time of possession, you know, third by, you know, they have the ball for 34 minutes. And, you know, they have two, one good running back, one capable running back. When you look at, when you look at the Baltimore, you don't have to just stop the number one rushing offense in football. You got to stop the quarterback too. And I, I don't think that there's any stopping him and he can pass the ball. Baltimore or Buffalo's defense is not, uh, Buffalo's defense I just don't see being able to slow him down. The only way that they can slow down Lamar Jackson is to score fast and furious and awful or, and, and often. And uh, with the snow on the field, that slows down. That slows down digs and some of those faster receivers that Buffalo has. But even without the weather, I'm on Buffalo. Or I'm on Baltimore in this game. Uh, I also like Baltimore for the first half. It's ten and a half for the first half. And over the last three weeks, Baltimore is averaging over fifteen and a half points in the first half. Uh, they're also a top ten team in the league as far as first, first half scoring. So uh, I'm going. Baltimore points, Baltimore first half, and then depending on the way the first half goes, you know, there might be some money lines here. Yeah, the, the bottom line is this game is Baltimore's defense versus Buffalo's offense. That's really it. But Buffalo, uh, I mean, Baltimore does not give up points. They just don't give up points. Like you said, 10 or less the first half, five of the last six, 19 or less for the game, six of the last seven overall. On the road, they're just as bad, just as good, I mean. They give up 10 or less. In the second half on the road, five out of six. In the second half when games are one and 23 or less. I, you know what? I like the under in this game. I think Buffalo's going to win, but I don't know if I'm thinking they're going to win by two and a half. I'd rather have two and a half than three and a half. Don't get me wrong. All right, so when we come back from break, we're going to look at our live plays. We've got three live plays. We made you some money. You're listening to Sports Betting Weekly. It, it, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Sports Betting Weekly. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Sports Betting Weekly. I'm Second Half Chaz. We are joined by John from GMF Sports Consultants and Black Hawk West. We are live. We got some live action. So we ended up with three plays, guys, right? So right now I've got all the games up, and I'm going to make sure that we have over the next 20 minutes the ability to leave with a pretty good idea of where we're standing. All right, so the first one was, NHL, we had the Rangers get three points. And so i got to get that game up because I'm just getting the Rangers, uh, the NHL game up. And it is now... Da, 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 da. Geico's whole 15 Where minutes thing. <laughs> that came from me. Uh, my first idea was in one score? quarter of an hour, your savings will tower. Oh, so uh, it's 4 not. I only scored. 15 minutes, so, 15%. But that's it. We're only one goal so far Geico. in that. Uh, third period. All right, so then we've got to the other game was your basketball game, John. Indiana. Indiana's up 15 to 14 in the second half. Now, that was a second half play for us. So we're giving three for the second half. Yep, correct. Yeah, they're, they're at the line. They're working now. It, it's a close game. It's it's They were down. I was watching pretty much the whole game. The first about 10, 12 minutes, they, they were down by double digits, and then they kind of came back. So it's been back and forth. So this is going to be yeah, a close we're gonna check on that right before we go. And then uh, with my NBA game, remember what I did is I saw the same thing with Indiana. I saw San Antonio down. Uh, the second quarter, they both scored 18. So uh, it's back to a three-point game. It was nine, I think, when I took it. So guess what I did, guys? I did it again. I know. Maybe I need to listen to that commercial. <laughs> double I down, would, double down. There you go. Well, I, got this, I got the Spurs minus seven. In the second half. So, mm. you know what? I'll take a middle. I'll take a middle. Like, they win by one and a half. They win by seven. So, that's our plays. We'll check back with those before we get out of here. But we are on to Sunday. Now, I wanted to say one thing before I, I got your guys' opinion. Uh, 
this first game Sunday is uh, a 10-point spread. I, I, do you ever – would you ever consider a 10-point spread as a money line bet? I'm gonna, let's ask John first. Uh, as, as You want to know what? I, I, I wouldn't because then you get stuck – to get value out of that, you have to put a whole lot of teams in that money line bet. You, you know, and then five hundred dollars to win one hundred. Ex- ex- exactly, it, it all depends on your bankroll situation and everything like that. But even with a big bank, I, I mean, I don't even know what the money line is. I won't even look at it. It's got to be at least minus five or six hundred. I, I think oh, well, four eighty. Okay, so minus it. So I yeah, I mean, unless you're parlaying that with something of value, um, I. You know, once again, me personally, I would not do that or unless you have some bankroll, you know, that you don't mind laying twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars on for a money line bet. But then you got to figure your ROI at, at that point, you know. So, yeah, me, me personally, no. You know, if, if you want to do something for fun, do, you know, I see these guys with these crazy eight, ten, you know, 12 team parlays. If you want to do that, sure, why not? Go ahead. But me personally, well, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. This is my suggestion to you. If you have a very big balance in your Bitcoin, okay, take out some of the money because Bitcoin's going to keep going up. It's going to go down. It's going to. It's Bitcoin. It's going to do it. Oh yeah. Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Take some of that money out. Take like forty eight hundred out. Right. Hope, hope that Bitcoin goes down, and then put fifty eight hundred back in at the lower price. Now that. Is, that would work on that investment website. You guess, would it? That's that's the way to do it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right, Wes. Uh, so, uh, oh no, do, do we didn't. So, yeah, we're talking about that game, John. First game of the day, Kansas City host Cleveland. Yeah, uh, I like Kansas City. I, I like them all all year long. But I, I mean, if you follow them, they don't really they don't cover. And obviously, the playoffs. Can I interject, Can I interject here? Yeah, I was talking to Vicky in their last eight games combined for the first half, the game in the second half. Their record is, I didn't do the math on it, but it was 3, 19, and 2. Wow. Well, there you go. I mean, you can't, numbers don't lie, right? <laughs> 3, 19, and 2 in the last eight games, yeah. uh, just burning people's money. Burning oh, it. Uh, burning. Yeah. Games. That's why I asked about the money line. Yeah, what? yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're going to play KC, obviously that's that's the play you want to make. That 10 is ridiculous. I don't I don't recommend ever betting a 10, you, you know, to be quite honest with you. Um, KC's probably looking to maybe get off to a better start. As we know, last year, all, uh, all of their games, they were behind. They were behind by significant amounts. I don't think they want to repeat that situation. Uh, Cleveland's coming in with a ton, a ton of momentum. They're feeling real proud. Uh, I mean, Cleveland's, you know, puffing out their chest. Uh, you know, everybody's on the Baker Mayfield train, which rightfully so. They played very, very good. But let's be honest, Ben Roethlisberger is not Patrick Mahomes. You know, they're not going to get – I don't think Cleveland's going to get those gifts where the ball flies over the head, you know, where Mahomes really doesn't throw those interceptions. Um, I like KC. I'm, I'm not going to take the 10. You know, like you said, you know, maybe throw them in some money line parlays for the fun of it. Cash out that Bitcoin on Friday and, and uh, you know, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right now, the, the bottom line is those Cleveland Brown backers, they deserve everything they get. My son had them on the money line. He had a good weekend. He had, uh, he had the, the two upsets, the Rams, and he had the Browns in a money line parlay. Mm. Nice, but, nice. And, you know, when you put a guy's bets in, you think you'd get a piece of the action. Uh, no. <laughs> you got to yeah, get yeah. your vig off, right? You got to get your cut. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Click. All right, Wes, you're a, you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan. You've been a Kansas City Chiefs fan. But but you know your team. And, and like I always credit Sloppy. we got to get Sloppy back on. I always credit Sloppy. He's the same way with Seattle. Passionate but, but knowledgeable and not stupid. No bet with your heart over your head. Are you going to touch this game? Well, I, I am going to touch this game. And, you know, to what you had asked earlier, would you ever consider going money line? And, and you know, I everybody on my podcast, when they bring up questions and ask about picks, you know, what I say is if you, if you feel like you need to buy the spread down to nine, well, then you like the other guy. So go there and keep your money. There's no – or just this isn't, the, this isn't the investment for you. There, there's always going to be another game. Um, I would I would go money line on the dog if I felt it. I took Washington to beat Pittsburgh on that random Tuesday afternoon, and you know that was that was great. But as far as this game goes, um, 
you know, a lot's been made about the Chiefs not covering spreads, but I think there's value to what John just said about how they don't want to repeat it last year. But what I was looking at, you know, Andy Reid off of a buy. I mean, that's the popular thing to say right now. But I think what you got to look at is Andy Reid's Kansas City Chief defense off of a buy over the last couple of years. Uh, you throw the, throw the Raiders game out because I think they underestimated them. But the other piece that I look at with this game is the Chiefs have played against really two just run centric offenses this year where they're, they're just not a high flying pass offense, just mainly running the ball. And that's Denver and Baltimore limited quarterback, just purely run the ball. And what they did to Denver is they jumped out ahead and they beat them 43 to 16. When they played Baltimore, again, the Baltimore Ravens that are in the playoffs, they, they jumped, they jumped on them early and Baltimore being as run oriented as they were, beat them 34 to 20. So I think when you put all of that together, I think the Chiefs are going to win this by 20. I think everything happened the right way for Cleveland. They got three turnovers early and jumped on top of what I feel looked like a very broken Pittsburgh team with the drop balls and everything else. And so I think that credit to Cleveland, they deserve that win. They look great, but I think that that, that was more of a Pittsburgh team not belonging than – then and Cleveland caught a lot of breaks. So I, I think that this game is going to be ugly. And again, this is not the Chiefs season ticket holder talking. You have to look at what the Chiefs defense does against running offenses and defense coming off a of bye. Well, again, those games you mentioned were right on my easy sports data, but they happened before the line I drew. And that line I drew is they're three nineteen and two against the spread. I just that 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 is a number that is going to be really tough to get money out of my pocket here, um, and that's why I was asking about the money line. I have a, a, a little betting strategy that I and, and again I give Wes and a, a lot of credit. He's he's as good with the betting strategies as anybody I've met. That we you know where you bet the uh, you bet a certain amount of units to win a unit, and I want to win a unit on the money line, and then I bet a unit on the, the point spread. So if it lands between 0 and 10, I break even. If it lands at 11 or more, well, t- no, push, no pushes, you know, so let's assume there's not a push. Then, um, if, and of course, if Cleveland wins a game outright, I lose all the bets. And I've done that before, but normally, I don't know, 360, 375 is the top end for me. Because even then, you know what? If you if you do break even, you put a lot of money down, and you, you should have just gone to the park with your dog. So that's 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 my thought on that game. I think I'm going to wait, and I'm going to bet that game live. All right. So the last game of the day, we got a couple minutes. We're in good shape. Is Tampa Bay at New Orleans? John, GMF Sports Consultants, talk to us. It's a great game. Obviously, I, I mean, marquee quarterback matchup. This is what the NFL wanted, right? Great Sunday matchup. You got Breeze and uh, Brady. Tough, tough. Uh, this is probably a game that I'm personally going to stay away from because I I, I, I can't call it. I, I don't know. Uh, Michael Thomas, you know, Kamara, you know, Drew Brees. I, I don't know what Drew Brees' injury situation really is. They haven't really disclosed it. You know, he had some serious you know, rib injuries and whatever that he came. I, I mean, he looked pretty good last week. Um, and then, you know, Brady on the other side, we all know the weapons that he's got. Defense, I, I think the Saints defense look, looked really, really good. If you put a gun to my head and tell me to pick one, I would probably go with the Saints right now. But I, I, I'm personally staying away from that one. All right. Wes. So I I really like Tampa here. I, I, think, I think if you are New Orleans – investor three is a good number because that's a field goal but i really like tampa here and i like them to win outright for a couple of different reasons we're not going to see one two in both conferences so i like tampa to win this game outright it's very difficult to beat a team three times in a row bruce arian is just a gutsy coach so he's probably got a game plan and he's going to roll the dice early and and Tom Brady has more experience winning in the playoffs than any quarterback that we've ever seen so I like Tampa in this game. I don't know, you know, how much I like them to win by, but that doesn't matter because we're getting three. But the but but the real investment for me is Tampa first half over ten and a half. I, I think that that is uh, 
I think that that's a gift. If you look at what they've done in the last three games uh, in the first half, that's that should tell you all you need to know about what's going to happen there. So that's the investment. I'm also taking the – I'm going full unit there, and I'm also taking Tampa plus three for the game. Uh, and then there'll probably be some money line, you know, into some high stake parlays, you know, some minor. Because you you taught me, Chaz, if you go four and zero, you better have that parlay. You better have the parlay. All right, so uh, I've got I've got both team totals over and the over. So uh, you know, if someone says who you like, I got the over. Right? What does that mean to you? They've got the game over. For me, that'll mean at least seven, maybe nine plays. <laughs> so I'm 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 doing, and I told Vic, I said I'm going to do that whole participation trophy where you root for everybody it's a really cool way to watch a game but it's even better when it comes out oh my god it's so much fun to have an over with both team totals over too if one of them hits it you get you can go two and three and the other guy doesn't hit it but when they both hit it it's a lot of fun all right so we're going to get out of here what are we going to do is first we're going to check on our play so we're going to go first to the hockey game where we are getting with the Rangers, we are getting three, and it's now we're still four nothing at the end of two. So, you know, we we'll look for a goal and take a push there all day long. We got the, the Rockets are up by one over San Antonio in the fourth quarter. No, in the beginning of the, the second half. So we have them uh, minus one and a half. And finally, we are going to the Indiana game. And let's check the Indiana game here. Yeah, they, this game took a turn. Indi- Indiana's, I'm watching it right now. Indiana's down 10. So, oh, okay. they need, yeah, they, they need to hustle up. We only got seven seven minutes left. But we don't have them for the game. That's right. Yep. We only have them for the second half. They're down yeah. six. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, right. we'll see what happens. They, they could still lose and cover the second half. But, yeah, they definitely need to uh, step it up these last six it's minutes. kind of how we're going to run sports betting weekly in the, the near future. The first segment we're going to cover live action we're going to play it we're going to try to win you guys some money there's going to be a reason then to hang around for the first 20 minutes anyway second uh the second uh segment will be half of the games we're playing remember eventually it'll be one game so with super bowl sunday what we'll do is we'll probably go with the props and i guarantee you in the second segment when we go with the picks by knowing your props i'll know who you pick john tell them uh, where they can reach you uh, you can reach me GMF underscore sports underscore consultants on Instagram. That is the best way to reach me. I also have a website, GMF sports consultants. Just type it in. I'll pull right up. And you Wes. Uh, nowhere right now. <laughs> it's soon to come. Soon to come. All right. Yeah. Well, we always hashtag you black Hawk West anyway, if we can't get the Wesley Boston hashtag black Hawk West. That'll take, I have a Twitter page set up. There's not much content on it. Uh, you know, I have a Discord group. It's, it's uh, at Chicago Options Trader. So if you, yeah, we'll, we'll focus on it in the near future. I am Second Half Chaz. You've been listening to Sports Betting Weekly on the Belly Up Podcast Network and the World Wide Sports Radio Network. Always be cashing. Good night, guys. It is the World Wide Sports Radio Network.